Hello, and welcome back to the DIY hosting for a WordPress website. In this video, we're going to look at exposing your Raspberry Pi to the world for the first time. This is our first tentative step towards having our Raspberry Pi hosting a website and an email server by exposing our SSH capability to the internet. So opening a port, particularly port 22, puts your Pi at risk immediately. It basically means anybody on the internet can at least attempt to connect to a Raspberry Pi. Now we've already made our Pi a little bit more robust to this by disabling any kind of password authentication. So you have to have the key to connect to the Pi. But nonetheless, I'm no expert on web security and I know that you nonetheless, you are putting your Raspberry Pi at risk of at least attempted attacks by opening up the port to the outside world. So we have to harden our Pi a little bit further using something called failed to ban. This is a utility that we can install using apt-get like we have done up to now, which will monitor IP addresses that are attempting to connect to our Pi. And if we detect malicious use and repeated attacks or, or at least attempts to connect, the Pi or the fail to ban application will blacklist the IP address of the attacker. So it's a nice way to harden the Pi further. But having said these two things, you can see why now it's very useful to have public private key authentication. It means that there's no way somebody can hack your password. Let's just make sure we keep your key safe. Okay, so what we will do is we will provide a route by which internal port 22 can get out to the outside world. And we'll do this to our router's NAT firewall, which has the capability to map an internal to an external port. So instead of using port 22 externally, we'll use something else like 4321, for example. So this is what I'm talking about. The red box represents our firewall and we've got coming into our firewall an IP, which would be our public IP, not our, not our internal local IP, this is our public IP of our router. Someone's using it with a colon 22, which means I want to connect with to this IP with this port. It then comes in and our firewall says, nope, you don't have access to port 22 from outside and it literally won't let it in, it just bounces off. Inside our firewall, of course, we have our nice, safe local environment. And this is what we have now. We've got our desktop computer, in my case, a Windows machine, connecting via my router to the Raspberry Pi. And I can do so using a local IP address. And up to now, we've been referencing the, the Pi using a local IP address, 192.168.173, I think. What we want, of course, is this picture over here. We want our computer to be able to connect from anywhere in the world through our router to our Raspberry Pi. And in a sense, this picture is exactly what we want for our web server. We want this kind of transparency to the internet for our web server and our email server. Now, we're not going to get that with this video. We're just going to expose port 22 in a sense, but it's the first small step and it'll introduce us to working with the router. So we're going to go down to the desktop where we're going to install fail to ban and we're going to demonstrate that we don't have access externally to port 22. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. And the first thing we're going to do is SSH into the Pi so that we can install fail to ban. So SSH Pi using our alias, and then sudo apt get install minus Y so that we don't have to say yes when it asks fail to ban. With that done, fail to ban needs to be started as it'll run as a service in the background. So we type in sudo, systemctl start fail to ban and after that we do the same thing so we press up on the keyboard to get the same command and we just need to change start to enable with both of those things done we now have fail to ban running on our raspberry pi it's that easy and it will provide us with an extra level of security for our pi the next thing to do is to demonstrate that we cannot access our Pi from outside of our local network. And we could do that quite easily. I'm going to exit out of my SSH connection now, and I'm going to connect again using SSH. So SSH, Pi, at, and I'm going to put my IP address in here, and then minus I, as we used to do. And I'm going to reference my key, which is located in the .ssh hidden folder, Raspberry Pi underscore key. And now I would type in, let's say, minus P22, and that's to say I wish to use port 22. Now, I've not really mentioned this properly up to now, but SSH runs on port 22 by default. It's like a universal standard. So internally, within your local network, it will be running on port 22. 
So if I was now to replace IP here with my local IP, 192.168.173, this would work fine. In fact, for the sake of showing it, I will, show, I, will, I will just type it in. This should let me in. It does. Now, if I was to type in instead of my local IP address, my um, global, my uh, public IP address, it won't work because my router will block it as shown in my, um, in my slides. But how do I know what my public IP address is? One thing you can do is just go to Google, search for put my public IP, and it will show you what it is. But a much quicker way to do it from your command line is as follows. curl ip info.io slash ip. That'll show you your public facing IP. So this is the IP of your router. And this is why in the first video, I made it very clear that you really could do with having a static IP address. So it'd be very useful when you have, because then you'll know that your public IP won't change. So now that I know my public IP, I'm going to substitute in this local IP for my public one. So this is the IP of my router. This is what the internet web sees for my router. So my router is addressed here. So I'm, though I am inside my network, I'm going to attempt to connect using this address as though I'm external to my network. My key is correct, the SSH command is correct, the username is correct, and the port 22 is correct. But it won't let me do it. What's going to happen is now I'm going to get a bit of a timeout, and I'll have to wait a few seconds for it to come back and tell me, oh, by the way, you can't do this, you don't have access. Okay, so what we need to do now is go back over to our slides and I'm going to show you how I modify my router in order to give me access to another port to my internal port 22. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to modify our router to give us access uh, through our firewall to our internal local network from outside. And it's going to do this through our NAT firewall capability. What that stands for is network address translation. And what it means is it's going to take one address space, which is the external address space, and translate it into an internal address space. In our case, it's simply going to say port 4321 externally equals port 22 internally. To do this, though, everyone's router is going to be different. Uh, for me, my router is accessed through a web interface on the IP address shown above, which is a local IP address reserved for my router. If I click on that link and I go to my settings, I am able to make changes to my firewall to set it up however I like. So what I do, and again, I can't do this for you because I can't access your router, but what I do is I visit advanced settings in my router. I put my password in as is required for advanced settings. Then I go to the firewall section. In the firewall section, I create a new application which relates a device to a rule. In my case, the device is a Pi 3 because I named it that in a previous video. And the rule is a rule to translate port 22 to 4321. Now you'll see there's a colon between the two numbers here and there is between 4321 and 4321 here. And that's because you have to, well, you may have to provide a range. Um, I'm saying a range of 22 to 22, so it is just the number 22 and 4321 to 4321, so it is just 4321. So I'm saying from outside, 4321 needs to go to 22. And this is what the picture looks like. This is what we're hoping to achieve. So on the internet, my computer, let's say I'm sitting in a cafe somewhere, I say, okay, here's my public IP from my router at home, and this is the port 4321. It goes through the internet and it ends up at my router because that's the address for my router. The router then says someone's trying to access the Pi, or sorry, some, someone's trying to access this uh, address, this network, and the port is 4321. What do I do with it? The NAT firewall says, ah, I know, 4321 gets translated into 22 for this particular device. For this, in this case, the device translates into a local IP. So it takes your public IP and your, essentially the port that you provided, the, the public address, and it converts it into a local address with a local port. That's what we're doing. So this is a quick screenshot I took of my, um, my router at home. And what it's showing is the uh, rule I've created called port three, sorry, pi three port forward. And it's range, the range of translation is 4321 to 22. And in these boxes, I would have typed 4321, 4321, 22, 22, and clicked add and then clicked apply. Then that automatically takes me to my port forward page 
and allows me to assign my Pi 3, which is, which is the name of the, the device that the router sees, because we renamed it. It allows me to address the Pi 3 to this rule, as I mentioned. Okay, so that's good. So I've just done that. I actually have just done that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you back on my desktop that this has worked. Okay, so we're back to my desktop. Now I just need to show that we can SSH into my Pi from my public IP address on port 4321. So this is the command we're going to be running. I prepared for you earlier. It is exactly the same as the one we ran on port 22 except that I have changed it to port 4321. You'll notice everything else is the same. Press enter and we can connect. If I was to have used port 22 here uh, instead, if I had attempted this, it wouldn't work because we're translating 4321 into an internal port 22. So hopefully that distinction is clear. We're using 4321 externally and that firewall will convert this port and this IP address into the local IP address and port 22. So the last thing we need to do is to make life easy on ourselves, we need to create another alias because SSH Pi will still try to connect to our local IP and, uh, and, and won't in fact change the port. It is automatically set to port 22. So let's make a change to our alias file. So notepad, as this is my text editor of choice, um, current directory, as I'm already in my user's home directory, and then I'm going to go into the SSH folder, the hidden folder, and I'm going to edit config file, just like we did in the previous video when we created the alias in the first place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the last entry, the alias we created for pi in the first place, and I'm going to paste it. And then all I need to do is change the IP address to my public IP address, which for me is 81.174.156.87. Obviously for you, it will be different. And then port, which is a new command, or well, a new entry that we haven't done before. And I'm going to use 4321. I'm going to save that. The only thing I've got to do now is change the name. So I'm going to call it Pi External. So when I'm sitting in a cafe with a cup of coffee and my laptop, I can connect to my Pi externally using Pi External instead of Pi. So just to confirm, SSH Pi still works. And hopefully SSH Pi External now works. There we go. So I've done exactly the same thing, but I've come in via my external public IP address. So we've shown here that we've been able to poke a hole in our firewall and make our Pi accessible for SSH to the internet. I believe it's reasonably secure because we've disabled password authentication and we've hardened our Pi using fail to ban. So there we go. I hope you found that useful. I really do. This is the reason I'm doing it. I'd very much appreciate it if you could like my video. It really helps. It helps me see likes. It really helps me carry on. And if you could subscribe to my course, you'll get all the updates as I produce new videos on this course and other Raspberry Pi related um, courses I intend to do in the future. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.